In this video, we're gonna look at how geometry affects the handling of your bike, specifically the trail. Now to do this, we've teamed up with expert frame builder, Tom Sturdy from the Bicycle Academy, who's kindly used his expertise to construct two frames that will allow us to demonstrate the difference that geometry can make to handling. Hopefully this will be really useful information for you when you buy your next bike because it will help you make better sense of a geometry chart. Geometry is very complex. Even though we're looking at trail today, it's always hard to isolate any one part of geometry because when we change one aspect, it will inevitably have a consequential effect on all the others. Now, before we crack on, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already, because it just helps support the channel. These are the two bikes. We've built them up with identical components. And I mean, how cool do they look? Proper mint. Um, they're exactly the same in terms of the components built up. Slight disclaimer, the stems are different brands. This is a zip one, this is a profile design one, but they're the exact same dimensions. I've measured them with verniers. But, I mean, I'm just kind of, drooling over the sweet components that we've that we've put on them but we're not here for that we first need to define what the difference is between these two frames and what we're talking about because they look the same so what is trail trail is the measurement of how far in front of the steering axis the contact point of your tire is this can be measured by drawing a vertical line down from your front axle and then another through the center of your steerer to the ground the measurement between these two is the trail. Now let's have a chat to Tom Sturdy, who built the bikes. He'll give us an expert engineer's thoughts on what trail is. Thanks for building the bikes, Tom. They look absolutely awesome. Now I've got them here in person, but um, what I want to know is, is how does trail affect the handling of a bike? Sure. So um, in simple terms, what it does is it adds stability to the steering axis of the bike. So by having a trail, it means that without needing to hold the handlebars, you'll know where the wheel is going to point because it will always follow the direction that the vehicle's traveling in. So as you're moving the bike and you try to change the direction, um, the trail is also contributing to how the wheel moves. To put it simply, a bike with longer trail will be more stable and a bike with shorter trail will be less stable. So the, the two bikes differ in trail in that one has got a, what, a trail of roughly 77 millimetres. So I think we've got 44 on the shorter trail bike and 70 millimetres on the longer trail. So, um, and so typically what you'll find is that uh, a bike with a, a, a longer trail will have a much more positive feedback for that rider. So you will be much more aware of all of the changes that are happening at any one time. And a bike with less trail will have much lighter feedback. So whilst the wheel will still behave in the same way, you're perhaps aware of a bit less stability through the bars. So something that's confusing me about the two bikes mm -hmm. is twisting my melon this, right? Is that although the trail is different on these two frames, the wheelbase in the geometry chart you sent me is the same. How is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So what we've tried to do with these two bikes is, is, is give a rider the opportunity to isolate as far as is possible, just the trail. So in this case, what we've done is we've manipulated the head tube angle and the rake of the fork so that we can keep, in fact, all of the other major geometry features the same. So the two bikes are slightly different in, in geometry, ever so slightly, uh, apart from the trail. That's right. Um, what that has meant is that the riding position is very, very slightly different between the two bikes. It was the only way that we could achieve it. Um, but what I've done there is, is, is we've designed the bikes so that the center of mass of the rider doesn't move. Their hands will have to move very slightly when you're, you're holding the hoods, um, but effectively we've moved them on an arc which will preserve the weight distribution of the rider. So to all intents and purposes, everything else is 
as similar as it can be between the two bikes. Well, thanks for explaining that, Tom. You've made it much clearer for me. So now we have our beautiful custom bikes. Let's go find out the real world difference the trail makes. We're now going to perform some highly scientific tests to hopefully see what effect altering the trail has on the handling of the bikes. First up is the agility test. In this extremely rigorous experiment, I'm going to ride both bikes back to back on timed runs through some cones and hopefully not knock over any of the eggs. This experiment is designed to see if the steering response is different on the two bikes, and if so, how different it is. First up is the bike with greater trail, 70 millimeters. The way the bikes have been built to isolate trail means that this bike has quite a bit of toe overlap. In reality, a bike with longer trail is probably designed for higher speed riding and will therefore have a longer top tube to account for this. Oh, sh Go on. Oh, God. Oh. Application is vital. Although a longer trail bike is compromised on low speed maneuvers, you could argue that it's designed with an emphasis on high speed turns where stability is gained through speed and where you lean the bike more to corner rather than turning the bars. Next up is the bike with the shorter trail, 44 millimeters. And I'm really interested to see what the difference is gonna be riding this because just on a little spin just now, they feel completely different. Hopefully this one will be much easier. Let's have a go. I can't believe the difference between these two bikes. It is like night and day. Instantly much more comfortable doing this test on the bike with 44 mil of trail. Bikes with a shorter trail are more stable when being lent over at low speeds. This makes them great for tighter radius turns as shown in this test. Yes, very interesting. On to the next test. The next test is the straight line riding test. A beautifully simple, but deceptively hard thing to do. It's gonna involve riding both bikes along this straight line that we've marked out. And I'm gonna be wearing the GoPro so that we can see how much deviation there is from this line. Now at faster speed, this would be easier, but we're gonna be doing it at low speed. And in theory, the bike with more trail should be a bit more stable and a bit easier to perform this on. So I'm gonna start with the bike that's got the shorter trail. Right, this is the first bike with 44 mil of trail. And going at slower speed, this is actually pretty hard to do. It feels quite twitchy, this bike. In the straight line test, small movements of the handlebars have a greater effect on directional change, meaning that it is harder to keep the bike from deviating from the line. So now it's time to try it with the bike with the longer trail, the 70 mil. Actually, that, is e that felt easier. When you're not leaning the bike, the longer trail provides stability, even at low speeds, making it easier to hold a straight line. The difference wasn't as big as perhaps what I was expecting. So I'm gonna do another test, which is to ride both bikes no-handed along this stretch here. So in the no-handed test, I'm gonna ride both bikes back to back along this straight no-handed into this hairpin bend no-handed, well, I'll try, and then round onto this straight no-handed, all in an attempt to see the willingness of the two bikes to steer at the front end on their own. Hopefully, we'll be able to see a difference. And for consistency, so I maintain the same cadence on both bikes, we're gonna keep them in the same gear as well. So first up is the bike with longer trail. Let's go. Oh. 
Right, the bend. This bike feels quite stable, has to be said. A longer trail means that a wheel is better at holding its line and resisting external forces. It's now time for the no-handed test on the bike with the shorter trail. Let's go. Bikes with longer trail give stability at speed. A common contributor to speed wobble can be a low trail figure. Whoa. This is because any deflection on the wheel has more effect. It's kind of messing with my head that two bikes that look so similar can feel quite so different. So this one has a much greater willingness to turn at the front end and that translates as feeling quite a bit more nervous when I'm trying to go around that hairpin bend with no hands. Um, it's much easier on the other one. The shorter trail bike, which performed so well at low speed turns, isn't so capable at resisting deflection forces on the road when riding in a straight line. It takes less force to make the wheel want to turn back on itself, making it feel less stable. As a final test, what I'm going to do is ride both bikes around the track a few times and, and come around these hairpin bends at speed to get a feel for how they handle in the corners when you're going fast. So what can we conclude from these experiments? Well, the bike with more trail has less kind of steering leverage. And what comes with that is a, is a greater willingness for the steering response to, to stay in line with the direction of the bicycle. Now, this kind of makes the steering feel a little bit more muted, but it does mean that the bike is kind of more stable when you're riding, say, no-handed or trying to keep it in a straight line. A longer trail bike is better for people who ride at higher speeds and aren't concerned with the bike's ability to manoeuvre at lower speeds. But the bike with the shorter trail feels more nimble, more agile and has a greater willingness to kind of turn and change direction when you're going through corners and things like that. A bike with shorter trail is perhaps better suited to those who ride at a slightly slower speed, perhaps in urban areas, with shorter radius turns. For some greater insight, I think we should chat to Tom Sturdy once again. Our highly scientific tests have clearly illustrated the differences there between the two bikes' trail, but what does this mean, Tom, and how should people apply this when they're, they're choosing their next bike? So. The challenge that I think you've probably identified is that it's not always the same answer for every situation and actually if it had been someone else riding the bike they might have had slightly different preferences um, and so the, the, the challenge for people when they're buying a bike is that what they prefer might not be the same as the person who's written the review of the bike that they're interested in um, and so I think that the best thing that people can do is, is just start to try and build up a frame of reference using bikes that they have ridden and bikes that they liked, bikes that they didn't like so much, and try and look at some of these numbers that we've discussed, so trail, wheelbase, bottom bracket drop, those sorts of things, and try and build up a bit of a picture of why they think the bikes that they did like worked for them and see if there's a theme that kind of repeats, and that, that's quite common. Um, it, it's worth pointing out that a typical road bike wouldn't vary, or two different road bikes, sorry, wouldn't vary anywhere near as much as the bikes that we've built here. So a typical road bike will be about 57 millimetres in, in its value of trail. They might go up to the low 60s or they might go down to the low 50s, but the variation is relatively small compared to what we've produced. Um, it should be possible for people to look at bikes that they know they like or when they go and test ride a bike um, to try and work out what those numbers are um, and build up a picture of what suits them and the way that they ride. It seems to be that a lot of bikes that are sort of off the peg frames seem to be fairly neutral. When you look at the numbers that they have for trail, it seems to fall slap bang in the middle 
of what we have on these two bikes. I mean, it, that, that I'm guessing is no coincidence. No, it, um, it, it, you're quite right. Um, the, the majority of um, bikes have kind of iterated towards a fairly similar solution. Um, and that's because a combination of what most people expect in terms of the feedback that they get from riding that type of bike. Um, and so it, they tend not to be too extreme. Otherwise, I guess the risk is that a big chunk of the cycling population might not like it rather than being fairly conservative and going down the middle. Um, it's definitely an area that given the opportunity of, if you have the opportunity to tweak geometry and select different forks, um, it's certainly an area that's worth exploring because there are some really meaningful changes that can be made to your experience of riding the bike by changing these numbers. Yeah, I think something that sticks out in my mind is I've seen bikes that were used by the MAPE team in, in, to great effect in, to, to win Paris-Roubaix back in the late 90s. And there seemed to be significant changes made to, to trail and forks and things on those particular bikes, they were customised, um, that you don't tend to see on a, on a lot of bikes today. So I think applications like that, would you, would you think that there's definite advantages to be gained? Yeah, I think so. And um, you know, certainly um, riders at the, the, the top level will, will, will have preferences about how they expect a bike to handle. And, and actually that might be different for certain types of events. So you might want a, a, a different handling characteristic on cobbled sectors or rougher roads compared to what you might want on higher speed descents and different types of cornering and that sort of thing. So um, there's definitely a case of you know, taking advantage of, of that at that level. Um, given the opportunity, why not experiment with that at any level of site? Mm. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Tom. And thanks again for building these two bikes. I've, I think they look great, to be honest. But both, it's amazing how they look the same, but ride so differently. Anyway, thank you very much. No problem. I hope you found this look at trail and bike geometry and how it affects handling really interesting and informative. And if you have, then please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If there's any questions that we haven't answered that you'd like to know, then just simply put them in the comments section down below and we'll endeavour to answer them in the future. And to watch another video on geometry and how it affects handling, well, you can click down here.